Hey guys, um, uh, I'm back. It's actually winter here, so it's, it's really cold, and I'm wearing this great big um, jeans jacket, jean jacket that I, <laughs> jeans jacket as if I'm wearing like pants on my arms, um, jean jacket um, that I wear every day and that I really need to get dry cleaned. It's not, it's not dirty, it doesn't smell sweaty, well it is dirty, but yeah, it's dirty. I think I need to get it dry cleaned, which is a bit gross. But if you go over to my vlog channel, and this is not a plug for my vlog channel, but if you do want to see me wear the same jean jacket every day for a good three months, you should go see last year, last year in winter, and probably this year in winter as well. Although I, I have been doing a lot of bed vlogs lately, which is where I kind of just turn the lamp on and then vlog while I'm laying down on my pillow. But, um, the reason why I bring this up is because I've got these like clasps, not clasps, like these buttons on my jacket and they're metal and so when they scrape against the desk I have to edit out the scraping sounds but it hasn't been too bad. It's kind of crazy because it's been like 32 degrees in, in Northern Europe, which is, I mean 32 degrees Celsius in Northern Europe, which is really, really hot. It's like a heat wave for them and, you know, for people from, for people from like a, uh, let's start that again. For people from Australia, especially Perth, um, maybe Darwin as well. Um, although I don't know too many people from Darwin. I do know a lot of people from Geraldton. Geraldton can get pretty hot. But um, for people from Australia and Southern Europe, that must be um, very funny. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, 32 degrees. You know, that, that's like an average summer day for us. You know, it's when it starts getting into the 40s that it gets really, really hot. I, I would like to see someone from Northern Europe... Um, experience <laughs> a, a hot summer day for Perth that'd be crazy um, and I think it doesn't get very humid as well up there so humid heat is even worse it makes it feel even hotter than it actually is All right let's uh let's start the playthrough I actually kind of like vlogging like this um, or, or podcasting at least so here we're in the sacred forest meadow this guy's pretty easy to defeat I got him in one hit for some reason. I don't think it's. I don't think that's meant to be quite right. I don't think you're meant to be able to kill him that quickly. But you basically sh use your shield, and then he turns around, and then you hit him. Um, some sneaky editing there. I'm not gonna. Re I sh probably shouldn't reveal that because I try and do my best to hide these kinds of cuts. I basically just completely leg it through this maze. <laughs> I get hit pretty badly. Oh, that's something else I need to explain with this vlog. Uh, not vlog. Let's play. Um, I'm gonna be getting. As many uh, items, like the gold sculptures and the heart pieces, as early as I can. So that's the reason why a lot of these episodes haven't been focused on the dungeon. I think a lot of other Let's Plays would see us already enter the dungeons by now. You know, it's it's been 12 episodes. This is the 12th episode. So, oh, getting hit pretty badly. Just going to run through here. Can't wait till the... Um, it's not a dark nut, but the, the guy that makes like sonic waves on the ground can't wait for him because we there, there'll be a time in, in the in the later part of this let's play where I get hit really badly but um we'll just be quiet for this this particular sequence here I really do enjoy these cinematic pieces they they did a really good job of making it seem like a movie or you know making the the jump between a movie and a game not not as not as far and especially since we're rocketing through this game, you know, the cinematic sequences seem to come a little bit more frequently.
Let's talk to Saria. Do I talk to Saria another time? Yeah, I think I do. Oh, let's not try and completely murder her. Okay, that's. A, I think that's all the dialogue we're gonna get out of her. Let's uh, let's get out of here. So, like I said, we're gonna try and get as many um, quest items as we can. I think it's. I think they're called quest items. I'm not sure if there's a technical word for that, but um, which will help us later on that to have more hearts and to have more upgrades from the gold sculptures and so on and so forth will be instrumental in you know doing a really good game. So, say for instance, we didn't have four hearts right now, I wouldn't have survived all of that damage <laughs> by being really gutsy and just running through those Deku scrubs nuts. Alright, now this is one of the cool things about finding little holes in the ground. You can, um, capture fairies. I think I keep this fairy for quite a while, so we're gonna have this fairy in this bottle for a long time. We have to drink the milk first. Take two gulps, we're gonna be drinking a lot of milk. Alright, let's go capture a fairy. I still, I still haven't got it quite down. I don't really know exactly how to capture a fairy properly. I think this is my favorite fairy fountain. This is the one I come to... ...the most. Basically because it's near... ...the forest temple entrance. And you can just beam to it straight away. It does have a huge... ...monster guarding it when you're an adult though. Trying, getting, trying to get onto that ladder and failing. I get confused sometimes about which direction I'm meant to head in <laughs> in this maze. Right, we'll just uh, we'll just exit the Lost Woods now. I think we have a couple of things we still have to do. We're going to be ending this episode in Kakariko Village. Okay, this is uh, an obligatory skip skip point. It's basically explaining what we already know, that the, when you play a magical song, a magical thing happens. I don't think we see bugs yet. I was kind of expecting some bugs to appear. Right. I figured that the easiest way to get this next quest item was to exit the Lost Woods and then re-enter quickly. Alright, here is the infamous Deku Scrub of Majora's Mask Legend. He's uh, patiently waiting for us. And if you play Saria's song to him, you uh, you get something cool. heart piece, which is pretty useful. And another heart container, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I keep repeating myself. Yeah, five hearts now. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for this part of uh, this part of the game. I think this is one of the earliest parts in the game you can have this many hearts. Alright, now we're gonna leg it. We're gonna speed all the way to Kakariko Village. I figured that would, that, you know, skipping through that would save a lot of time. It also helps me fit things into 10 minutes a little bit more easy, easier. Another cinematic sequence. Sometimes Hyrule Field can get pretty annoying. You know, the, the vast distance becomes really difficult to traverse as a kid. Just gonna talk to this, this guy. I think he's basically a clock. Could you imagine someone who could keep perfect time in their head? That'd be insane. What, what kind of job could you do? You could be like a... You could be at the finish line of a running race or something. And you'd have to prove that you wouldn't manipulate your results to get someone to win. Like a world record or something. Basically explaining the layout of Kakariko Village and how it was built in the first place and who lives there. Right, the first thing that we have to do when we come to Kakariko Village is help this woman collect her cuckoos. 
little chickens. I'm not sure why they didn't call them chickens. Yeah, not sure. <laughs> it's actually quite a big town. We'll trigger the, trigger the sequence. The, she basically tells you how many more you need to catch. There are a few, few cool floating... Floating puzzles in this particular mini game. The next couple are up the stairs here. Alright, we're coming to the end of the episode, so I'm actually going to pause it just as we're holding a cuckoo a little bit later on, maybe in a minute or two. But um, the next episode will obviously finish this little little puzzle, so we'll head back to head back to this woman with this with this chicken, and then when we head up to the north part of the town, we'll uh, we'll pause the footage. It's a really lax music. The town has really lax music. It's pretty um, it's pretty cool. It's like nice and lazy. Feels like a like a country town, even though it's not not really a far, like placed in an area that does farming. It's at the bottom of a bottom of the mountain. Alright, this is going to be the chicken that we pause on. So, we'll pause here, and I'll see you guys for the next episode, when we finish this mini puzzle, this mini game, and we head into the Kakariko graveyard, which should be pretty good. Alright, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys then.